She was sure that those wonderful purple horns would go great with this incredible dark turquoise coat. And she was right. We are recording. Hey, everybody. My name is Joe. Welcome to the third episode of Create Together. We're telling stories about people all over the world who are coping with this strange time of pandemic and isolation by staying creative and doing it together with other people, collaborating online on all kinds of creative projects. And when I say together with other people, you know, the other people is you, the one watching this right now, you. So if you feel like doing something creative, maybe with your family or with your kids, or even if you're on your own, or maybe especially if you're on your own, jump in, make some art with us. In a second, I'm gonna show you a short documentary project a bunch of us made together about how not everybody during this pandemic is able to stay home and how it feels to be told you should stay home when you can't. But first, watch this. Missing something that you could easily replace Maybe if I asked you nice you would give it to me Please give it to me One of the things you see people saying a lot online these days is we're all in this together. And usually somewhere in the comments you see someone else say, nope, we're not all in this together. And then usually my gut reaction when I see that is, hey, let's all be team players, come on, we are all in this together. But the truth is, even though this virus is impacting all of our lives, that impact is very different for different people. We're not all going through the same thing. There's a disparity in our experiences. Now, this next project started with a powerful piece of writing about that disparity, and it inspired a lot of different people with a lot of different experiences to contribute their perspectives. And that writing was written by a woman in Oklahoma named Morgan. Hey, Morgan, Vicious Vixen here. I live in Oklahoma with uh, my three children, Skylar, Julie, and Ryan. I do have to work to support them. I'm a single parent with three kids that rely on my income for survival, you know, for our home and our utilities and our food. I'm currently working at a fulfillment center. My job is to make sure that our priority shipments get sent out on the time frame that they're supposed to be. One day I was at work. I received the news that we had a confirmed case. You know, I started looking at the people around me and thinking about them not being able to stay home and be quarantined um, because all of these people, including myself, are out continuing to work out of necessity. It was just a, a frustrating feeling. So during one of my 15 minute breaks, I just sat down and decided to write how I felt. It's titled Dear Diary because I just kind of wrote it as if I was writing in a diary or a journal or whatever. And I just kind of let go. And here's what it says. There have been confirmed cases where I work. This guts me. There's a high probability that I've been exposed. Now all I can do is try to remain somewhat calm, keep working, and hope that I'm fortunate enough to be a statistic that just gets sick. It's been hard for me to focus on anything else lately. People keep throwing out numbers of projected death rates and those numbers are him, her, and me. The working class, the poor, the people doing jobs for survival so others can remain in comfort in their homes. It's irritating to see those who can afford to stay home offer advice to those who cannot. If we could afford to be home with our own children, safe from the dangers that loom, we would be. This is why it's taken me so long to like actually get on camera because um, it's not easy. It's not an easy place to be. 
this piece of writing really, really impacted me and stuck with me. It really struck me because, you know, there's there's so much advice going around right now about, you know, stay at home, stay at home. And I've, I've, I've said it. I've said it on these videos, like, stay home. But it's really a luxury. It's a scary time to live in, especially if you're not one of the quarantine elite, which I refer to the people who can't afford to stay home without the worry of losing everything that they have and offer advice on what to do because they don't realize that for some people that, you know, we risk losing everything if we stay at home. It doesn't feel fair to me that some people like me get to stay home and, and seek safety from this pandemic, but not everybody does get to do that. And it comes down to economic realities. So we started a project to make a short documentary piece about who stays home. You could you can talk in the camera about this. Tell us if you're staying home or tell us if you don't get to stay home. Um, maybe you have to work or maybe you have other reasons why you're not getting to stay home. I just wanna hear all about it. How do you choose between risking getting infected and risking losing your shelter and being unable to buy food and being unable to survive? You're stuck between a hard place and a hard place. I'm a general manager at a fast food chain. My concern here is this. I'm a fast food worker in a state with a shelter in place order. On average, 200 cars a day are coming through my business. Cars full of people. And let me tell you, most of them are not essential employees. All of the people that I look up to and respect and appreciate most are telling me, you know, you need to stay home. I can't afford to stay home. We're doing great. <laughs> we haven't gone to work in almost a month. We're still getting paid. Well, I'm working online. So I'm still working technically. During this pandemic, I am working in a warehouse that's pretty empty. They're having us come in so that we can make money, but we're not even working enough hours to make a decent paycheck to pay bills. I'm immunocompromised. I'm supposed to have gallbladder surgery, but it's been delayed indefinitely. And it's really much more beneficial for me to not take any risks and just stay inside and stay safe. I set up a few rules for my company, my, my teammates, my coworkers to wear safety mask, wear the gloves. I even got them uh, this little face shield, which you just put in the back and it protects you a little bit more. Being a nurse in all of this definitely has had its positives and negatives. On my days off, I stay home and play with my two young kids. They understand that when I get home, they can't come near me for a little while. We even have a plan set up. If I were to have an exposure that was very, very clearly an exposure when I was not wearing the appropriate PPE, that has changed too. Our dynamic of what it looks like when I get home. It sounds crazy, right? Who sacrifices her health for money? But in this world, we see it all the time. I mean, I have family who works in manual labor and that is 10, 12, 14, 16 hours a day, working in the fields, working outside in the sun for extended periods of time, uh, working until your body just can't take anymore, and doing it for minimum wage, if that, just to survive, you know, just to get by. Right? They say money can't buy happiness, money isn't happiness, but at a certain threshold, money is health. Let's not forget that this trade-off has always been there, it's just that now we're seeing it more clearly. Everyone's desperate to get back to normal, but what was normal? Maybe we don't want to go back there. I mean, why not go to better? Let's think about these people that were suddenly calling essential to us as if we've been treating them with the respect they deserve this whole time. My blind hope and optimism really for, for us moving forward is that we recognize how important these workers are and we start treating them accordingly and we don't lose this sudden appreciation that we have for the working class. So music has always been an important outlet. A bunch of us made a song. It's kind of a weird little punk opera told from two different perspectives. The quarantined elite, as Morgan put it, on one side, and on the other side, those who can't stay home. We ended up with a little music video 
and I'm gonna play it for you right now. can't stay home. All right, and that is our show. Thank you so much to everybody who contributed and shared their stories. I think now more than ever, it's important that we listen to each other and try to understand what other people are going through because everybody has a different experience and not everybody can make the same choices that you can make. Thanks to YouTube Originals. Subscribe to our channel to catch the next episode. Until then, stay safe, stay positive, stay creative, and I'll see you next time. Thanks again. Again, my heart.